What is wrong with this image? Or why doesn't it work? Or better yet, how could I have created a better image? Before I answer this, let me give you a little bit more of the backstory, the story behind this picture. This photo was taken in Arches National Park. I was there a few months ago and I was there for seven days. When I went there, I had a list of the must have images from this area and this was one of them. This is sunrise. Sunrise through south window looking at turret arch. Now for Moab, Arches National Park is just a couple of miles away. You drive up the road, get into the park, and then by the time you get to the window section, it's about 15, 20 minute drive. This was the, my very first day in, in Moab. So I got up an hour before sunrise, I drove to the park, scrambled up and down the rocks, made it to the place, set up. <laughs> it is just a great experience to get up there at dark and see the sun just come up in light, turret arch. At first I was a little bit too tight, but then I asked uh, people if they were okay with just giving me a little bit of room, and everyone was super nice, so everybody backed up and gave me enough room to get this final shot, which I am super happy with. So. This particular day, the sun was about 10 to 15 minutes late, and that's because there was a cloud that was blocking it. So by the time it came out, it was a little bit later. I went back home, I loaded it in the computer, and then I noticed this small but huge mistake. It was two inches. These are classic spots, so there's always a lot of people. And when I got there, there was already a few people that were set up. And of course, everybody goes in and we set up for the, for the classic shot. Let me show you that one. You zoom into the rock, and then you just get the window in the background. So it's all framed by the rock, and it looks really cool. And that was what everybody was getting. But when the sun came out, I noticed by my feet how it lit up the rocks underneath and that to me just looked incredible. So I asked everybody if they could just give me a second for me to take this picture. See, there was somebody set up here on the rock. They were taking pictures from here. There was people on the right. There was people everywhere. Everybody's here trying to get the same image. I mean, everybody's making an effort. So I don't want to ruin somebody else's shot just because I have a different idea. Of course, I got home and then I saw the mistake. This part right here, and I'll, I'll get closer here and I'll show you. This part here blends in with the background. It looks, the image looks great, it looks fine, but I, that's in the back of my head now and I know it. And I know that if I would have just moved the camera two inches the other way, it would have been perfect. Maybe this would have been hidden a little bit, but I'm not too worried about that because the light would have separated it. But there's no separation here from this rock and the rock from the arch. And that's what bothers me, that's the mistake. But I said, I'm here for a week. This was day one. I have five more days that I can take this picture because one of those mornings I was gonna go to Mesa Arch and I'll show you that image here in a minute. But I really wanted to get this picture. <laughs> so I went back the second day. Uh, yesterday I thought I had the best image ever. And when I got home, I noticed a composition mistake. And it's interesting because I just mentioned that on a previous video how much moving one or two inches how much how much that that much can make such a big difference this was day two i went out i set up now you see the composition that i wanted to get on day one but the sun never came out the light never came it was just dark and gray i drove i hiked that's what i got <laughs> no light this is day three I'm trying to get that picture of turret arch looking through the south window. I'm running, <laughs> even though I got up, got up just a little bit too late and now the color's coming out. I hope the sun doesn't come out early. The sky had really pretty colors and there was some nice soft colors in the background, but the rock never really got that color that I was looking for, that bright orange glow. So that never happened. I got two days left or three days left because I leave on Sunday. So that, again, that's another day that I got up, I went, and it didn't happen. Day number five of my attempt in capturing this, this image that I've been trying for a week. So I looked up and it was just complete cloud cover, so I didn't come up to the park. Day number six was the same as number five. The sun never came out. So now I only have one more chance to replicate and try to fix this image that I got a week earlier. Day number seven. Yeah, I'm probably wasting way too much time on this one image. Uh, this is the hardest I've ever worked to get one image. And today is Sunday. 
And if you watch my channel, you probably know that I always recommend staying home on the weekends and going out during the week. I only have today. Who knows when I'm going to be back in the area. <sighs> so here we go again. I got up that morning and it was clear. You could see that it was going to be bright. The sun was going to come out. It was going to be an amazing day. So I drove up there. I hiked up. I had like 30 minutes before the sun came out. I was super excited. And then this was the image. There's a big dark shadow in this area that wasn't there the first day. I'll show you back and forth. Uh, from one to the other. So the lighting was similar. It was a little bit later because I, I waited 20 minutes to see if it was a difference in light and it wasn't. The only thing that I can wrap my head around was that the cloud that was there acted as a diffuser or a reflector. So the sun came out under the cloud, the cloud reflected the light and it blanketed everything evenly. And that didn't happen the whole time I was there. And I tried multiple times, as you can see from that video. <laughs> I went multiple days and I just could not get the right lighting. I was so upset. <laughs> if I would have waited just a minute, look through the viewfinder, look through the screen, try to compose the image before I asked people to move, I probably would have gotten done a better job. But I felt rushed. Everybody else was super nice. They were friendly. They said, yeah, no problem. We'll move for you. But in the back of my head, I was wasting their time. This is the print. As you can see, it looks incredible. The detail, the quality of the print, the paper has this little texture to it. It looks, it looks really, really cool. It's a 12 by 18. The detail is amazing. And I really, really recommend anybody that's into photography to print your images because it really takes it to the next level. It completes a process. You get up, you go, you take, click the shutter and then to see, have it printed, to have this texture, this really, really pretty fine art print in your hands. It just, it really completes the process. But like I said, this one's just gonna go in the closet. <laughs> I might display it in my own house one day, but that's, that's all that's gonna happen with that image. Now let's go back to Mesa Arch. Mesa Arch is probably the most photographed sunrise here in this, in this area around Moab. Uh, and there's a good reason for it. Sunrise here is amazing. You get light underneath the arch and everything just looks incredible. It just, it's just beautiful, the bright red color. Uh, but that means there's always people here. It's about an hour further away than uh, Arches is. So you gotta drive at least an hour and then you hike to it. So you gotta get up two hours before sunrise, which is fine. I knew I wanted this picture. So I got up early and I went there and I did the best I could to capture this image. Um, when I got there an hour before sunrise, there was a line of photographers waiting and they had already been set up. They had the cameras ready. Everybody was ready just to get this picture. Um, so I, I set up right beside them and I was very careful to not cut out the LaSalle mountains in the background. As you can see here, let me show you a closer image. You can see the mountains, the outline of the mountains. So I was very careful not to cut that out just like I, I did with the other image. Uh, but then when the sun came out, I noticed a big mistake. So in this image, just a little bit closer, you can see the mountains and now you can see the mistake. We were all too far away from, from the arch. You can't see down into the canyon. Down that canyon, it looks amazing. There, there are more canyons and more canyons. That's why it's Canyonlands National Park. I thought about getting in everybody else's picture, but photographers are ruthless and I wasn't gonna do that. <laughs> Instead, I noticed something different, a different opportunity. This was a very cold winter morning and the wind was brutal. It was just blowing left and right. It was super strong wind. And that's when I noticed the sand lit up by the, by the sun. The wind was blowing the sand through the canyon and out into the abyss. And I used a zoom lens so I could be out of everybody else's way and zoom in to capture the sand in motion. So I was out of the way. You still can't see down into the canyon because I would have been in the way, but the sand just adds that extra element where you don't have to. You can see some of the canyon here. You can see the mountains or the, the peaks here and you can see the mountains in the background and just a little bit of the glow from the sun. The print looks incredible. The texture of the paper, again, it just looks amazing. So again, print your pictures. Uh, it really, really does help complete the process. Sometimes we see other people's prints and we want to replicate it. And I couldn't even replicate my own print because the weather, the sun had completely different ideas. So 
I still tried and I encourage you to try to replicate other people's pictures just because you're going to learn so much from it. I mean, don't make the exact copy, try to make it better if you can, but we don't realize how many times somebody went to the same spot to try to get this image. They could have been there a hundred times. I, I don't have, I don't live in Moab, so I can't go there every day. It really does add to the process when you know how hard you worked for it and when you know what you learned from that experience. I talk about it like it's a mistake, but it's not. It's a lesson. It's a lesson learned. It's something that, that elevated my photography. And because of that, I was able to adjust for being able to adapt on the fly and look for a different composition and now take your time and compose and get it right. It's something that to me is priceless. I really do enjoy the printing process, getting your pictures printed. And one day I'll buy a printer. Right now it's not cost effective or feasible because I don't have where to put it. But one day I'll buy my own printer instead of having to, to get prints from someone else. But these look amazing. And to be able to hold your prints and, and know that this is something you created just feels really, really good. It's awesome. <laughs> If you're interested in photography and travel and maybe a little videography, uh, consider subscribing to this channel. And if you found anything of value in this video, uh, give it a thumbs up, please. It really does help YouTube promote my videos. <laughs> There's other ways to support the channel. All the links are down below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.